of his days teaching things that wasn't so. I suppose if he come today, he'd find the same thing. Things that wasn't so from the beginning. If you always want to know what's truth, go back to the beginning. Go back to Genesis and you can take ever cult and ever true from the day. This, the plants all begin in Genesis because Genesis is the seed chapter of the Bible. And if we want to know what is right, go back from the beginning, just like I was trying to say last night. When God once makes a statement, he can never vary from that statement. He's got to keep it all the way through. What he said in Genesis is the same thing in Revelations and all the way through. He's God, and that's all. And all of his words are true. Now, we find out that when Jesus came, he found the teachers that had taken the word of God and had perverted it into suit themselves. They had taken the commandments of God and conver uh, perverted it into a creed. Now, remember, there's only one creator, and all, Satan is not a creator. What is sin? Sin is unrighteousness, and unrighteousness is righteousness perverted. Maybe I'll make it clearer. There, you're a mixed congregation. You listen to your doctor. I'm your brother. To, for a man to live with his wife is righteousness. He married to her. The same act with another woman is death. One brings life, the other is death. See? Unrighteousness is righteousness perverted. What is a lie is a truth misrepresented. So that's what Jesus found and what all of us will get into as long as we take and add or take away from God's Word. It's perverting God's Word. So when Jesus came, he found out that they had taken God's Word and perverted it and made a tradition of man. And he said, why do you with the uh, uh, change the Word of God? By taking their traditions and changing the Word of God, making it say something that it really did not say. We find out that he found that in his day, and he had found it here today. And him in the presence or in the person of Holy Spirit, the same God that always has been dwelling in his people in the form of the Holy Spirit, it witnesses out to the true believers that man perverts God's Word to fit their creed instead of making their creed fit God's Word. Amen. I want somebody to find the Apostles' Creed in the Bible. As we had said today, I believe in the Holy Roman Catholic Church, the communion of saints. Anything communes with the dead is spiritualism. There's only one mediator between God and man. Amen. The man Christ Jesus. That's all. Amen. There's no other mediator. So anything they pervert the things making an apostles' creed. If the apostle had any creed, it's Acts two thirty eight. He, he had it. That's what they preached continually and and pounded into the people. They must repentance towards God and so forth. That is, if there's any creed in the Bible, that would be it. If the apostles used. Amen. So they uh, all the leadings of the Holy Spirit stayed with the Word. And if any man or angel ever says anything contrary to the Word, Galatians one eight said, "Let him be accursed." It must be the Word of God. Paul said, If an angel from heaven comes to you with any other gospel than that which you've already heard, let him be accursed. So we believe that heavens and earth will pass away, but God's Word shall not pass away because the Word is God. God can't pass, creation will pass away, but God cannot pass away. Not no place for jokes. The pulpit is no place for jokes. So I think the word of God should be preached from here with the solemnness of the of the heart, and we should remember. It. But just to say that to make this point, the old uh, darky here somewhere in the south one time made a statement that he'd rather be standing on the word of God and stand in the heaven. They asked him why. I said, "Cause both heaven and earth will pass away, but God's word shall not." That's right. We got to stay on the word. Jesus, when he came, he said, Moses, because the hardness of your heart suffered you a divorce from your wife, but it wasn't so from the beginning. Now, we find out they took the commandments of God and made them of non-effect. When Jesus came, he found people looking to the church for salvation. What did they get? Creed. Each denomination makes up its own creed. And then that's what he found, the people depending on the church for salvation, and they found 
man-made creeds. And if you come today in person and talk to us, you'd find the same thing. Man making the Word of God fit their denomination, giving them creeds, and there's no salvation in a creed if it's not the Bible. It's got to be Bible because His Word is all we have need of. It's His Word. And His Word, when He is the Word, the Word of God is God. That's all. It's His Word itself. He's, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word's still God. And it's still God. Now, we find out that when he come, he found the man then taking the commandments of God and making them of non effect by taking the commandments of God and suiting it around to meet their creed so it was of non effect. And the church looked, uh, the people looked to the church instead of looking to God's word. So therefore, he said, it wasn't so from the beginning. We find it the same today as I've quoted you three times already this morning. And watching that clock, it makes me nervous. So uh, I want to say this on that this is true. Then in that day as it is now, and now as it was then, they holler out, where is God? Yes, amen. Well, the very thing that they've left God when they left his word. Amen. That's the reason we have things the way we do today is because people left the word of God. Yes, if a doctor wrote a farmer a prescription, and you added something to it or take some away from it, you'd kill your patient. Right. right. You've got to keep it just the way it's wrote. There's enough antidote there to upset the poison, enough poison to kill the germ. And too much poison it without the antidote would kill the patient. And uh, too much antidote without the poison, what would it do? It would help your patient. So you've got to keep it right. And that's the way God's Word is. It's yes, God's Lord, prescription. That's right. Lord, that's right. yes. yes, brother, it's God's prescription to His people to cure every sickness, every disease sin and physical, whatever it may be, it's all met in God's Word. Amen. It's God's Word. It was so at the beginning. It was so in the Middle East. It's so in every age. And it's so this morning just the same as it was when he spoke it. Because it cannot deviate one speck because it's God's Word. Then people today, no wonder they cry out, days of miracles is past. There's no such a thing as divine healing. Why do they do it? Because they took God's word and made their creed wrapped up in it, and it mixed the thing wrong, and they have got no power in there. If an angel, a bishop, an archbishop, or whatever it might be, come and change one word, it'll change the whole prescription. Let's say exactly what it says. What God said, let's leave it right like that. The churches have gone today. They're off on a tantrum somewhere, making organizations, making denominations. Bringing people after creeds instead of after Christ. I don't want no creed but Christ, no law but love, and no book but the Bible. That's exactly what we have. That's God's creed. It's God's prescription. It's God's antidote for sin. It's God's antidote for healing. And it's, uh, it's God's power made manifest to us as we take the word in our lives. Now, we find out that the answer all of that word is the God of Moses. The reason Moses stayed with God and the things was God was following Moses' prescription. Moses was following God's word. The way that Peter, James, and John hit the mark every time because that they, they followed the word. Here some time ago, everybody knows I like targets and shooting and so forth. And I had a little Model 70 Winchester. I stood out at a 50 yards on a target range. I drove eight bullets to the same hole at 50 yards, and it got out a little bit. So I, you have to fool with it and tinker with it, and I uh, like to do that kind of settle my nerves. And I got out. I couldn't make it come in. I thought it needed to re-bed it. I sent it back to Winchester Company. They sent back and said, oh, uh, Brother Branham or Mr. Branham has said, it's, uh, that Winchester is one of the best. said it will group an inch at 50 yards, at 25 yards, I mean. An uh, inch at 25 yards, so that's the best you'll ever get. It. I know the difference. I know that 50 yards, I drove eight straight tacks with it. So I knew that that was wrong. Now, that's the way, and I couldn't rest till I got it back. Now, I'll do the same thing. Now, I'm not one of these people who like to hit the splatter of the church says so, so let's just stay with it. If the apostles, by the word of God, by the commandments of God, by the same Holy Ghost that we got, Draw the touch to divine healing to powers of God. If we'll stay with it, we know it's so bad, so stay so we zero in. That's all. Well, we know it's this one. How is the days of miracles? The 
Christ and Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. How can that God be dead that raised again the life forevermore? How can we make it to a creed when God has no creed? God is a person. God dwells within his church. And you are his church. If you've been born again and filled with the Holy Ghost, you are God's church. God dwells in you. He tabernacles with you. When God came down was made flesh and dwelt among us, what did he do? He, he spread his tent amongst human beings. He, he crossed his path from God to man to become that man might become like him. Oh, he become me that through his grace I might become him. Oh, what a great thing. We'll never understand what it was. No wonder people call out today, what is God? Get back to the Word. Get back to the beginning. In the beginning, he said to his disciples, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. These signs shall follow them that believe. That was it. Get back to that same Word. It'll produce the same thing. They followed that Word and it zeroed in and told the tax that was tax that was promised that God made was made manifest. If we'll get back to that same Word, it'll drive the same tax, do the same miracles, perform the same things, make the same lives, make the same creatures, raise the dead, heal the sick, cast out the devil, see visions, prophets out. It's the same gospel that drove the tax then. If we'll get back to the same, like get the gun back in the same condition it was at the first place, the vibrations all out of it, it'll zero that bullet back straight. And if we get all the vibrations of unbelief out of us, God's work will zero. That's it was at the first beginning. That's exactly right. It'll zero every time. If it wants, it'll do it again. Don't be satisfied with a creed or something. Stay right there until the word zero. It reminds me of time when the mother and father, foster father of our Lord Jesus, had taken him up to the Pentecostal feast. And they went three days journey, and, and finally they missed him. <laughs> they, they couldn't find him. That's where the church has gone now. It's gone more. It's gone about 2,000 years journey and missed him. There it is with signs everywhere, a fearing of his coming. And they say, where is God? Where is God? What will come of him? Did you notice? Mary and Joseph searched for him among their kinfolks, but they found him not. Today we go back to see if the Methodists has got him, the Baptists has got him, the Presbyterians and the Luthers. Buster, they didn't find him. Neither will we find him today. No matter how much we try to go back and revise one of them old dead denominations, we'll never do it. Where did they find him? Where did they left him? Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Think I'm a holy lord. I guess I am. You find him just like they did. Where did they left him? Where did they left him? That's where they found him. That's where the church will find him. Where did they leave him? At the Pentecostal feast. Yeah. Where will the church find him? Back at the Pentecostal feast. Where they left him at? When they pulled away from the doctrine of the apostles and so forth back in them early ages back there, they pulled away from it and formed their own creeds and started the Nicolaitan doctrine, formed the Catholic Church, organized a religion of, of what called the Christian religion, and from there they've organized and broke down the things that brought all the Christians into creeds and so forth and mixed it all up till it's just the same conglomeration that he found when he comes. Exactly. Back to the beginning where we left him. When he was powerful, when he raised the dead and healed the sick and cast out devils. Back to the beginning where we left him. They say, where is he? Is he with the Methodists? Is he with the Baptists? Or even is he with the Pentecostal? No, sir. Go back to the, not Pentecostal organization, Pentecostal denominations. That's the name. That's right. Who can organize Pentecost? Tell me. Pentecost is not an organization. Pentecost is an experience to any believer. Back to the experience. Not back to an organization, but back to an experience. Pentecost is an experience. Let me tell you something. You look at the fruit the Pentecostal churches are bearing today, you'll find out they are not started from the beginning. Arguing, fussing, stewing, upside down, pulling for this and pulling for that. Jesus said in John 14, or John 15, I am the vine, ye are the branches. Is that right? Now you farmers, you Texans, Louisianans, and what you may be here, anyone that's got common sense that ever seen a vine grow, Know that the vine does not bear fruit. The branches of the vine is what bears fruit. But it gets its life from the vine. Jesus is our resource of life. Amen. Yes, sir. Now, we'll notice then that Jesus is the resource of our life and he's the true vine. The very life that's in the vine is in the branch. 
And if that vine puts forth a first branch, and that branch is a bunch of grapes comes forth on it, if it ever puts forth another branch, it will be a bunch of grapes. It'll put forth another branch, it'll be a bunch of grapes. And it'll be the same kind of branch on to the end of the vine. Oh, God. Now I need my half off.